Hi guys, welcome to video nine in our ethnic painting series. We are going to do a little bit more texture now. I know last time when we were working, we had done the bases of our shading using our colors that we created. So we created this gorgeous palette with all of these tints, tones, and shades of our mother color. And we started doing some base work with our shading. But today, we're going to add a little bit of texture so that we can counteract a little bit of the orange hue that is left from the mother color. And it's just a way to neutralize that a little bit. It's so becoming perfect tone. I really like where it's at, but I do want to neutralize it just a little bit. So just a refresher, if you hadn't been watching the other ones, if we look at our color wheel, when we are in this orange family, if we look opposite of it, we would be looking at going into a blue texture or a blue wash would help neutralize that. Now, because it's not exactly orange, it's kind of more of like in that red orange family right through there, we're gonna fall right between that blue green and the blue kind of hue and cross again, we're between that red orange and orange. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna do some texture rounds using my blue green that I've created. Now, this is different than what we were doing before. Before, when we were doing the mother color, the consistency of these paints consisted of one part pigment to one part thinning medium with a few drops of thinner if we needed and that will give it a little bit more workability so that one is one to one this one over here our blue green this one is two parts pigment to three parts thinner so it's a little bit more of our color but this was thinning medium and this is thinner and then i added a few drops of baby oil and again this is mixing if you are using Genesis or a comparable heat set line. So this one's much more thinner. And with our texture, instead of doing our brush work like we were doing, we were using like our mop brushes and kind of doing the whole thing. I don't want to do the whole thing. Now I'm going to do just the, the texture so that way we don't cover up all that gorgeous shading that we've got started, okay? So let's get started. We're going to start with our texture. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and use this texture sponge. I'll show you what that looks like. This was a texture sponge that I created. You can see the difference between our modeling and our texture. Modeling has larger holes so that when you apply the paint, the paint that's around is going to look more veiny where this one has much smaller holes and they're closer together so it's going to have more of that bumpy kind of appearance so that's the difference so we're going to use more of a texture one thing i do like about when i do this step is that it's a lot easier to get more rounds done because it flashes a lot quicker versus when i'm doing my washes it takes a lot longer for the thinner to evaporate or the paint to flash. The downfall is it does take a long time. It, it takes a while to build up. You can see all of the colors that we've already done. The last one we had done, we had done a wash with our red and now we're bumping into our blue green texture again. Okay, so I'm just going to go really um, randomly. I'm not going to do it real close together. All right, I'm going to go behind the ears. I'm going to go on the edge of the ear, but I'm not going to go in the ear. Right up into the ear canal, but not in the ear. Now this one, because we want to kind of emphasize what we've already started doing with our shading, I'm going to bring our blue-green up to where our shading point is so that way it'll help give our shading a little bit more depth but we're going to avoid some of those areas that we wanted to highlight. I'm going to go a little higher with this cheek 
I'm leaving the chin out because the chin had a little bit more of highlighted area there. Kind of go right on the smile line. I'm going to pull up the photo. Now we did more shading kind of on the bridge of the nose, but he has more of a highlight right on the center of the nose. So here we go. This is a nail art brush, brush that I use. I really like it. Um, it's got more of a rounded or slightly angled uh, tip, but it's a good one that you can use brush work. I will pat off any excess on my sponge so that way I'm not wasting any color. Looking at my photo, just kind of referencing where we're at. Go around. Just kind of doing this patting motion underneath the nose a little bit here. It's got a, a little bit of a highlight on the top part of the lid, but then we've got a little bit more shading through here. So we're just going to accentuate. I'm going to go right on the inside of the open mouth in the corners there. I'm going to go right underneath. So it's kind of like accentuating the shading that we've already done, but it's also neutralizing it at the same time. I'm going to go right inside the ear where the most depth would be. So we want to continue to build up depth in those real dark areas. Alright, so that's looking good. And then we'll let that flash. I'm going to probably do that one more layer of the blue green. And then once that's done with that second layer of the blue green, we're going to move on to the next color. Because of timing, I'm going to shorten this up a little bit. Okay, we're going to do the same thing for the arms and the legs. With this though, I am only going to do one arm and then one leg. And I will have you guys go ahead and do everything. So that way I can keep the video a little bit shorter and get moving on where we need to be. Same concept that we did with the face. We're going to do this kind of random pattern with our sponge and I'm going to avoid the areas I want to highlight and then I'm going to do a little bit more texture in the areas that we did shading. So it's almost like filling in the area versus leaving a shaded or a texture part behind. So it's just accentuating those areas a little bit more. So everything else is going to be more random and kind of spaced out. But where those areas are that we did shading, that's where we're going to bring that texture sponge together. Go over the hand. Go right here. I'm going to go right in the crease of the arm here. And this is where we can get in our brush. So once you get like the overall part of it done, use your paintbrush and do like a pouncing kind of technique over the areas that we shaded. And that is just going to bring depth to those shaded areas naturally. It's going to accentuate what we've done. And if you forgot about like what areas do I worry about shading, basically when I'm doing that, I'm looking down the limb, kind of turning the limb around, and I'm looking for any of the shallowness or the areas that are have more indentation. And I will kind of go over those areas with more of our shading to create more of that depth. With this, you can also kind of hit in between like any of the deeper creases. Um, I'm just going to do a tiny bit right in the knuckle there and behind the knuckle. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing with the other arm. Now the other arm is bent, so I'll quick show you that, but then I'm going to move on. Okay, same concept. I'm going to do the whole thing with our texture sponge other than our highlighted areas because I want to keep that a little bit more highlighted. And then the areas that we shaded, I'm going to go ahead and go over with my brush to accentuate the shaded areas. But at the same time, this is neutralizing a little bit of the orange hue in that mother color that's left behind. So go ahead and do that. And then I'm going to also do um, the legs the same fashion. 
I will continue putting the links in the description of the tools that I use so that way if you're interested in something you see you can easily find it. and hit those creases and it's basically I'm hitting the side of the crease that the shadow would kind of be casted. Okay, I'm gonna move on. I'm gonna do the other arm and the other leg. I'm gonna do this two layers, let it flash, and then I'm gonna go ahead and bake it, and then I'll be right back with our next layer. All right, now we are going to move on to doing a little bit of our base blushing. And when we're doing that, I need to mix up the color a little bit better to the tone that I'm looking to get. Just to hit a little bit on our color theory, I'm just gonna show you. Right now, these are the two colors I wanna adjust. So I want one that's gonna be a little bit more of a red orange, and I want this one to have a darker shade of a red orange. So we're gonna make this one darker, a little bit lighter, so that we can use these two as a blushing color as our starting base. So like when we're looking at our little zippy, I wanna add a little bit more of that blushing now. I'm gonna start adding that more red orange right through here and then through here. I want to add a little bit around the nose through here. I wanna add a little bit just up through here and then on the lip itself and then we'll do inside the ears. So this is like your base starting point to building up on your blushing. All of this is going to meld together so that it looks real natural in the end. All right, so I'm gonna use this lovely nail art brush as my tool, and I will look and see if I can find the link for this, but this is just a real good one. The, br the bristles themselves are real soft, so it's very flexible. I like to use this kind of a pickup color and to do more pouncing. So it's a really good multifunctional tool. All right, this one, now mind you, even though it's got a little pink in there, we are gonna adjust it. I don't really care if it's got a little pink in it and if it's not exact, cause that's just what color is. It's kind of playing around and getting it to the shade and the tone and the tint that we want. So having this more of a red hue meaning hue means pure color. So having that red hue, we wanna add our orange to that to get our red orange, but I wanna adjust this pink so it's a little bit more on the red side. So I'm gonna pick up some of my primary red over here. This is the Genesis red. And I'm just gonna put a little bit of that in there and we're gonna mix this up. I'm gonna add a couple drops of our thinner, just enough to kind of Thin it out. I'm gonna turn this so I can get to it. See how it's like a more of a pinky hue? I'm gonna add more of my red to that. Now, you know, it doesn't have to be perfectly red. If you choose to do your straight Genesis red or your primary red with whatever line you're using and then your, or your secondary color, the orange, you can do that. I'm just gonna kind of adjust this one so it has a little bit of a different shade. Uh, in order to get that red orange, remember you're using one primary, plus one secondary will give you your terretuary. So then I'm gonna add my secondary, which is orange, and I'm gonna pick up about that much, and we're going to mix that up. Now look at how nice that just shifted that color into more of a red-orange color. And I think I wanna go a little bit more. And this is where you gotta get creative and adjust it to your liking on how dark or light or how much of a hue it has. You know, it's, it's gonna be personal preference. All right, so that is more like it. To refresh your memory, I want to lighten this up a little bit so it has a lighter tint. And how do we do that? 
to, in order to get a tint, you add white to lighten it a little bit. Now, this one was a off-white color that we had created when we had done this palette. And that's why I just adjust the colors that I have. I'm not real picky about having a pure, pure white or pure, you know, red or whatever. I will work with what I have to just play around with the color to get it adjusted to where I want to see it. So it's okay if this is a little bit more of a cooler um, white, almost like a little bit of a pink in it. I'm going to go about that much. We'll start with that and see how that looks. I like the color. I do like the color. I want to lighten it just a tad though. This baby that we're doing, uh, the Memorial Baby, has a little bit more of a orangey undertone. So we're not going towards that red blushing. We're going more towards that orange kind of coloring. And my thinning medium has a little bit of a tint to it from previous colors that I've used. And again, I'm not real picky if it transfer color a little bit here or there. So why are we using thinning medium versus using more of our thinner? Because the thinning, the thinning medium will allow the paint to be more workable and a little bit more on the thicker consistency so that it stays where we want it to. You can still do the few drops of your thinner to kind of thin it out just a little bit more, but if you want it to be more workable and you can adjust where you want the color to stay, then you want more thinning medium. I'm gonna add a little bit more of my white. We're gonna adjust that tint of this orange, and then we're gonna add about this much. That's more like it. Now I use a couple of different tools. This one, I'm just kind of being lazy. I'm trying to do it quickly. So I'm just using my brush. I'm going to use a few drops of my thinner. It's more of a one-to-one -one ratio on our detail paint, but you can use either your brush to do this or you can use something like this. I did put a link in the description to show you where you can get this kind of tool. I love this tool for mixing. It helps to kind of get that color away from the edge and you're not wasting any color. So I kind of just scrape it down into the well. The tool that I put in the description is the same tool. The difference is that it has a natural wood handle versus a painted one, which is way better. You can see here where it's white. This was actually blue, but because of having been exposed to the thinner in the thinning medium, it actually wore that blue paint off and I had tran blue transfer on to a kit once. Couldn't figure out where the blue was coming from until I realized it was my mixing brush. So I'll still use it because it's already worn away and I'm aware of it, but use the natural one in the link. That is gonna be a lot better. We're going to do this one. Now this one's already got a pretty good uh, hue to it. Now this one, we've got a really good base already. If you wanna make it more orange and just darken it up, which is my goal, you can add a little bit more of your secondary color. So your primary red, secondary orange will make your terretory, which will be that red orange. And if you wanna adjust the red orange, just add a little bit more orange to it to get it to your liking. So I'm gonna pick up a little bit more of my orange because I want it to be a darker kind of color. And why I didn't use my squeegee again, I don't know. If you find that it's too runny and maybe you added too much thinner to it, just add a little bit more of your thinning medium to thicken it up. And if you don't wanna use the thinning medium, you can always use the thick medium as well. Just use very little. Okay. Now, in order to change the tint to this guy, you have to add black to get a darker shade. Does that make sense? So now that we've got our, our red orange where we want it, we wanna change this to be a darker shade. We're gonna pick up about that much, and I'm gonna add that into our red orange to darken that shade to where I like it. See it? doing quite a bit and don't be afraid to play if you use too much of one color and not enough another it's okay don't be afraid of it it's color color can be corrected and adjusted and played with love it have fun with it experiment i just i love watching the shades change okay now you can see the difference between our two red oranges this one's a lighter tint and this is a darker shade 
tint, we added the white and the shade, we added black. And in order to get the red orange, you use one primary, meaning your red, with one secondary, which is your orange, to get your terretuary, which is the red orange. All right, now that we have our colors, we're going to start doing a little bit of playing with our beginning base layers of our blush. Now that we got our palette mixed up and we're ready to go, I'm gonna start with Zippy's head. With the Zippy's head, with this type of technique that I'm gonna do, I like to do almost like a stippling effect. So you can really use any brush. If you've got a fancy stippling brush, you can certainly use that. I like using this one. Play with your, your tools and play with what you feel comfortable with. I'm gonna start with our lighter areas. Color. Now a little this color goes a long way. So I'll kind of pick it up on my brush and kind of tap out excess paint on the edge of my palette or my well. And then I'm gonna go over those areas. All right, I'm gonna go in right above here and I'm going to go kind of in through here I'm going to go right in here I'm going to switch over to a different tool now, I didn't add any paint to this, but now I'm gonna tap it. It's almost like a dry brushing technique. You can use your wet brushes in addition to your dry brushes if you want. I just want it a little softer, so rather than picking up more color, I'm just using the, the brush without having picked up color. And I'm gonna tap over the stippling areas that I put down to soften that a little bit more. And look at how nice that's looking. I love that. Okay. I'm going to go in through here. And I'm going to do a little pouncing, soften that out a bit. Oh, he's so cute, you guys. I want to go, I'm gonna go with a smaller brush. I'm gonna go right in through here. We wanna soften those edges, so we're bringing depth in those areas. By doing the lighter shade, it's gonna keep our highlighted areas our focus without looking too much. For the sake of time, this video kind of got a little bit long. I was fortunate that I had two cameras running last time because the one camera was recording, but it stopped recording audio, and then at some point it stopped recording video and audio, so I was using my backup camera, so thankfully I had that going. So I've learned that now I'm gonna keep two cameras going, so that way I don't have an issue where I can't go back, because I'm trying to do these tutorials as I'm painting. This is my dry brush as well, and I use this one quite a bit, but this one's working just fine. So you just gotta play around with your tools and play around with your paint and do what's right for you and what feels comfortable and what you wanna see. I and mean, this is an art, it's not a paint by number. Now I want to add a little bit in the lip area. This one again is a nail art brush. This one has more of a narrow tip to it. It's very, very small. It's great for detail work. One, I'm gonna get in and just do right around the corner of the nose with our lighter color. 
bringing it up around the side going underneath the nose the top lid is a little bit darker than his bottom lid in our photo so we're gonna kind of go in through that almost drawing it towards the inside of the mouth just on the corners here because in our photo lips are much more highlighted through there I am going to go kind of underneath with this lighter color though underneath the lip not really on the lip I don't want it to have a lip line I just want to bring a little bit of depth to it and then we're going to do the top of his mouth right above the lip Using another dry brush, I'm just going to press out the edge just a little bit. I don't want a, a line line, I just want it to be a soft shadow. With this video, we're at about a half an hour or so. I don't want it to get too long, so what I think I'll do is I'm gonna split this segment into two. I know that we didn't get a whole lot of painting done with this segment, but hopefully you've got a lot of good understanding with color theory, because honestly, if you understand the color theory and understand how color works and how you can create color and so on and so forth. Doing this is easy. All you need to do is looking at whatever photo or, you know, if you're doing something without photos and you're just kind of doing something on your own, you got to look for those areas that you want to create more depth and shading and areas you want to highlight and looking at areas that have a little bit more of a different color where we get into more of that blushing and then it's a matter of just putting layers upon layers down so that it's nice and soft when it's all done. I'm going to do a tiny bit on the nostril, on the top like edge. softly press that color out and all this is doing is softening the edges so that you don't see lines I'm gonna go just underneath see how it's got the shading right above the lip and then we have a, a little almost like a whiter kind of line through the top of the lip and then it gets a little darker in our portrait baby's view it, it has a little bit more of that so I'm just going to tap on the edge right in through here I'll bring it up to the top sorry my husband's working on ki our kitchen so it might get a little loud from time to time I'm going to do the ears. I'm going to go right over this kind of portion of the ear. Just in through here. Very, very soft. Using the dry brush, pr pressing that out ever so slightly on each edge. on both edges 
going from both directions. So I kind of tap the edge going this direction towards the outer portion of the ear. And then I'll flip it over so I can get just inside that ridge and go towards the inside portion of the ear because I want to make sure that I'm getting the upper inside edge of that ridge of the ear. I'm going to go a little bit right on the tip of the nose. He's got more of that highlight right on the top through here. And when I'm using my dry brush, I'm not like going crazy with it with a lot of pressure and I'm not just going over the whole thing. I'm trying to use the edge of my dry brush to hit the edge of where I laid the paint down. So it softens the edge but keeps that other area highlighted that I wanted to highlight. Now I'm going to use a bigger brush. Again, kind of doing that tapping motion, picking up a little bit. And don't be afraid. I know it looks scary because it's a lot darker but remember these are made or mixed with the thinning medium so it's still going to keep your paint uh, very light it's not going to be dark as you think it is because once it's baked it's going to lighten a little bit Going over the areas that I wanted to adjust and kind of deepen up that shading through there. And I'm kind of starting from the bottom portion where it's going to be the darkest in our shade and bringing it up towards the highlighted area. So as I'm bringing up the color, it's getting a little bit lighter and lighter towards that highlighted area. Once we get done with the head, we are going to wrap up this series just to keep it from getting too long of a video. And then we will work on our limbs in our ninth video of our series. I want to keep the videos shorter so that they are more fun to watch and not so long and drawn out. I have this area I want to just pick up a little bit of color. If you have an area that maybe you have too much color, use a wedge, a nice clean wedge, and kind of press it out with the, the wedge, and that'll soften it as well. We'll pick up a little bit more of our lighter hue. That's better. So it still keeps the highlight in there, but it's starting to cast a little bit more of that pretty tone to it. That's why you want to use your lighter tint. Tint meaning the lightest color and the shade meaning the darkest color. So adding, whoops, adding white and adding um, black to your color. Sometimes that happens. It's okay, just blend it out. And I just kind of am laying the color down over and over to where I like it. And then we're gonna 
bake this. So after we get everything down, remember this is your base layer. This is not the finished results, okay? This is your base layer. So once we get it to our liking, oops, I wanted to use the other one, that's okay. Let it flash, bake it at 265 for eight minutes. And when it's completely cooled, we'll go on to the next step. All right, guys, thank you so much for hanging out and hopefully you're learning things and hopefully you're having some fun. Please make sure if you are enjoying watching these videos and if you're learning something new to hit that like button and subscribe to our channel and you'll get notified when we post our next video. For this particular series, I've been posting the videos every Tuesday each week. So I look forward to seeing you guys all again on our next video where we continue doing our blushing using our lighter and our darker red-orange on our sweet baby's limbs. I will see you guys all again soon. Thanks for watching. <laughs>